Welcome to another Lumion Livestream tutorial showcasing some of the new effects and features of Lumion 8. This is Chris Welton from C. Welton Design and in this tutorial we're going to cover some of the new open street map features that come with Lumion 8. So let's go ahead and jump into our scene here. So I'm just going to go ahead and work with this blank plane scene. Now open street map um, was introduced in Lumion 7 and it, there's a lot of there was a lot of potential with it and I I'd use it a couple times for some city projects but I definitely had some issues with it before with the inability to get it to conform to my site sometimes but Lumion 8 has introduced several new abilities to really help uh, manage and control the the environment that comes in the buildings and the massing that make it much more useful and I will I definitely look forward to using it more now with this flexibility. So for those new to OpenStreetMap, it is located in the Landscape tab here and right here, OpenStreetMap, and we just go ahead and hit this On button here. Now it's going to do this token thing, and if you haven't done it before, it just has you, um, it has a little box that you need to check, saying that it's in beta, I believe that's what it's, it says still. So first we're going to pick our GPS coordinates. Now I had Let's see, before I jump into it, I want to show off our project we're going to have here. And I happen to know that the scale is off. Okay, it's somewhere around here. So this is the Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower. One of my favorite buildings growing up as a kid. It used to be the tallest in the world. And it's all for the first time not too long ago in Chicago. We're going to place this building in Chicago. And I know this this wasn't my model. The scale was off. And I'm not sure if it's still correct. But that's okay. We'll, we can use OpenStreetMap to find it. So this is the address here. I got it from Google. There's the, uh, that's the building there. We're going to get all those surrounding buildings in Lumion for us. And so I'm going to paste that address right in here. So let's go ahead. It grabbed it right there. It says Skydeck Chicago. That's the that's glass room up at the top here. And before we had to be really, really careful to get this exactly where we needed it to go on this map. But I'm going to show you. I'll even throw it off here. Say we just missed it by a block. And we, we're going to do our map range, which this is kind of small for here. We want to get a good amount of this city in here. It's going to take a second to download, but it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to hit download. And we're going to find out if I got the scale right on this again. So I would recommend for some other use of this in smaller scale projects. Uh, Michael Brightman did a live stream for Lumion showcasing a lot of eights features. And I really liked his use of OpenStreetMap in uh, his project. In, uh, I think it was somewhere in Denver there. And he was able to show how he blended it with his building and some little higher detailed SketchUp models next door with some lower detailed ones. And then these were in the background. And I think that's what works best for these renderings. It all depends on the level of detail. Sometimes I try to get uh, photorealistic with really high quality buildings in the background. But that's a huge investment in time and effort and resources, especially if the models aren't available. This is just a button click away to have quick massing. So this is what came in. It looks like my scale is just a little bit off. And we can see our building's not quite in the right spot. I'm going to slightly adjust that. And I'm actually not going to move my building because Say we've already developed our building, or our house, or our commercial building, we have landscape, we have everything set up, we can't just move everything. I'm going to show you now how OpenStreetMap can move. We couldn't do this quite before, and, it, and if things need to be rotated, your, your, uh, your project needed to be oriented north, east, southwest correctly to, to really be plotted correctly in here. Now it's, it's pretty easy to manipulate. So there's an edit button here. 
back into OpenStreetMap tab. So we grabbed it at one of these locations here. Let's go to this move button. So this origin here is grabbing the OpenStreetMap. So now, look at that, and it turns yellow when it's intersecting with, with the street map objects. So now I'm going to line this up. Alright. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna use this to get my scale correct. It's just a little bit off. Apologize. I wish my model was already perfectly scaled. I think that'll be good there. So what you notice is that my model is rotated 90 degrees incorrectly. Now, like I said, I I could just easily orbit it here, but in case we've already worked on the project, I'm gonna show you how I can orbit the street map now. So we have these these options down here. So I used move before grabbing this node right here. It looks pretty good here, but what we need to do is rotate. For OSM open street map. Rotate OS open street map. I'm pretty sure we need to rotate this way. And then it's a matter of moving it back. Oops. I thought I had set to move. Now it should be oriented correctly. Now, either OpenStreetMap is off or my model's off. I'll probably say my model's probably off. I didn't make it. But that's now lined up. And look at that. We have all the Chicago skyline kind of set up in here. In fact, that shot I looked at before that picture. In fact, this will be a fun little thing to show. So that is somewhere around here in the, in the lake. We're kind of looking... Back here, a yeah, similar shot. Not sure exactly, but we've got our skyline in here that quickly. And I wish we could move a little bit faster. This is as fast as a camera can move unless I teleport. But let's get back here. So now we have a problem. For one, the style of these uh, of the street map is these black buildings. It looks too much like my building. So I'm going to change appearance. And this is what it looked like before. So we can change them to white, red. And I'm going to kind of go with this gray look here. And what we need to do is I need to get rid of this building, for example. It does not need to be there. So we've, we've shown the move, open street map. We've shown rotate. We also have a height open option here. So there's our grab point right here. We can also just easily edit the height. Definitely huge improvement over before. We could not <laughs> easily manipulate it like this. And now we can even hide specific buildings. So I'm going to select this building and now it's done that kind of that hash like pattern there. So when I hit the check bar mark that building's gone. And I can even go ahead and say I'm getting a shot right here and that building's blocking it. I can select that building and now it is not there. Maybe I could replace it with another of my own building or replace all these buildings nearby with slightly more detailed ones to get my render a little better. And if we want it back, we just check it again. So that is how we manipulate those things. And there's another great option here. And under change appearance, we still have, this is from before, we have toggle earth, water, buildings, a couple different areas. In fact, I don't like the land use. I don't need to see green in this shot. Let's just say that's our, that's what we need for this. So before we had this building minimum height, you know, these are for buildings that have not, from what I understand, an open street map. Is this an open source thing that you could actually go in and edit yourself? I might be wrong, but from what I remember reading, it's something that users have, have added data into themselves or companies, and you can actually go in and change it yourself. I might be wrong, but that's why sometimes you would see random buildings before that were just shooting super high up and weren't accurate. Now you could hide those. And for all the ones that aren't assigned, that we're seeing move here. See, this building was assigned, so it doesn't move. The, all these other ones were unassigned. 
And but it was nice to be able to just kind of give him some height here. But now we have a randomize. It really kind of makes it pop more, makes it look a little more believable. So now we can get some pretty cool shots. Um, I'm happy with what I have right here. I'm going to do a quick movie. Just kind of showcasing this. Let's do a shot where we're looking at the building and just going up like this. And we'll do a fun little time lapse. Just load some effects I've already had set up. There we go. Yep, so there we have our building with some open street map background. Now you can grab I don't want to say everywhere. There's definitely some places I found that don't have the data put in yet. Smaller towns. I think a lot of the United States cities will have it. Maybe some other foreign cities or smaller towns won't have the information. I think you can add that yourself. Um, but for the big cities, it's definitely worked. And there's definitely a little bit more detail on these buildings than before. That's kind of what was being advertised, like some of these buildings have a little bit more. I think New York specifically had some really good ones. I just happened to pick Chicago, but... Yeah, I hope this, uh... I hope I was able to demonstrate pretty well these the new abilities we have with OpenStreetMap. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna get the sun accurate here. It should rise over here. That was bothering me. So... Yeah, like I said, I hope... I hope I was able to demonstrate OpenStreetMap in Lumion 8, how it's so much more easy to work with, and there's a lot of potential there. And I think it's going to continue to develop, develop even further. Um, it's a great tool. Not all, not everyone needs to use it. People using residential probably won't touch this, but a uh, great option for those working in big cities or just need something in the background that's not flat. Break up that whole horizon like this shot right here. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, and also, just want to make a, a quick shout out that Lumion has all of these features that I'm covering. Lumion has covered, they have their own official video on each one of these effects. I really recommend taking a look at that. In fact, I'm going to try adding the, the link to the, in the description to each one of these videos that Lumion has. My point is just to... Uh, give my take and go a little bit more in depth with some of these and give some real case scenarios I try to show off. So maybe you'll learn something new and just get a better look, a couple more aspects of it for those still kind of taking a look at Lumion 8 or have 8 and just want to see these features in work, like in use. Alright, well thanks for watching and I will I will see you guys next time.